few years ago, I helped run a camp at Jehoda called Metamorphosis. It was a junior high and high school camp. And uh, we'd have a, every, uh, I'd have a group of high schoolers, uh, about 10 of them. And we'd run around during the day, 100 person, capture the flag, canoeing, all the things you do to try to wear out the high schoolers, knowing that you'll get more worn out than they, but you play the game anyways. And uh, at the end of worship, at the end of the night, uh, we'd have worship, we, we had to convert the horse barn into a worship space because we'd outgrown every other building on Jehoda. And uh, we'd have this big worship service. And then we would go to a, a small place I'd light a single candle, and I would tell the, the 10 or so uh, teens, this is your turn. This is your, your turn to speak what you need to say, to tell the stories you need to tell. And uh, they would. There was one uh, fellow, a teen, a young guy, he loved soccer, loved music. One year he pulled up to camp with dual 18s in the back of his vehicle, 18-inch subwoofers, 2,000 watts of thump. It was amazing. Whew. And uh, I mean, so he was popular, like the center of attention. And uh, so you never guessed he was, he, that he was going to tell this story. He started talking about how when he was young, about the age of my children, uh, his parents got a divorce. And he, this story has gotten a lot harder to tell now because of the age of my children. Like, I can see it. He, he remembers standing by the front door with his little bag packed because his dad's going to pick him up. And he's going to go spend the weekend with his dad. He's so excited. And his dad never shows up. And he never sees his dad again. And so like, here he is a decade later, and he hasn't seen his dad in a decade. And so we're, when we're talking about God the Father, who created you and loves you and has made you to be beautiful and amazing. He, the whole father thing in him, he's got some problems, right? He's struggling with this. And uh, later on in the week, we're, we're chatting, and uh, he's telling me, you know, my dad's gone. Yeah, man, whew. And uh, he's telling me about it. Tim, Tim, Tim and his mom. And he's telling me, Andy, I fight a lot with my mom now. I don't like it. I don't know what to do about it. And so we start talking, like, what, what can we do? Like, and so your mom's going to come and pick you up. We have this, like, one moment where we can, what, what do we need to do? Because, because you'll have, like, one, one opportunity to, like, say something to her. What's, what's the one thing you need to say? And, and that's what we did. We, when, when we're closing worship and parents are sh walking in and... Uh, I pull her aside, and in retrospect, now as a parent, this probably sounded terrifying to her. Terrifying to her. Like, can you come with me, ma'am, for a second? And uh, I, your, your son wants to tell you something? Like, of all the things that could be coming, like, oh God, what's this gonna be? I would handle this differently now. Uh, and, and your son needs to tell you something that's important. And I got to be there while, while this teen told his mom, I want to be a better son. He said that, and I just stepped back and let them have their moment, right? I want to be a better son. That powerful moment. That, that, that guy, he, uh, he's a teacher in Missouri now. He went on, got his Eagle Scout. Like he is, I respect him greatly. He said he wanted to be a better son, and he did it. And uh, whew. Uh, we talk about love, right? We talk about uh, love your family, and this is like love, the nature of what love is. And, and, and I want us to chew on how love is a word that changes and grows. Like when, when, when you're born and you're like, yeah, well, you're not tall, you're long because you can't stand yet. And when you're, you're long, like the person who loves you is the person who brings you a bottle. And if someone's not actively bringing you the bottle, you scream like a banshee. Right? And so it's a growing, it, it is an, one of the first acts of, of a child growing 
understanding of what love means, that uh, love can mean that they're going to go and get you the bottle and bring it back. Right? That, that's the first moment when they start to understand that, that, that the understanding of grow, love starts to grow. And, and then the first time a child has a sibling and the idea that your parents love you, but your sibling is actively bleeding and you're annoyed. Right? And, and so like, the idea that love has, has to prioritize, right? that, that, that changes. And then uh, you get married. And love, again, love is a word that continues to grow. Like, I, I, I was flying solo for years, and then I got married. And I started learning to do the dishes differently. Like, the, the small things that add up into a whole new way of life based upon, I will change how I live based upon love. Like my, and then you have children, and I assume, and that's a shift. My understanding of what love means has changed. Diapers, right? And then uh, grandchildren, I assume it shifts again. And I'll, I'll get back to you in a good while. <laughs> right? And so the word, the, when I say love, that word means something different based upon where you are in life, what you've experienced. As that word grows, as that practice grows, sometimes it stalls. Or sometimes there's scar tissue. Sometimes there's baggage, Right? This, this teen who, who's carrying the baggage of his dad ditching him when he's four or five. Ooh, right, that's some baggage. Right, that, that's a challenge. I mean, it, or people end up being, for reasons that make sense, or maybe they don't, I don't know, but people end up very self-centered, or, or they, they're, they're trying to live in a, they, they want to love people, but they're just not very good at it, like a mal-shaped love, a, a disformed love, a, an, an unhealthy love. Right? And to that, we hear the words of the prophet Joel. And a prophet is someone who loves God's people as much as God does, and loves them so much that they dare not tell them anything but the truth. Right? This is broken, and I love you too much to gloss over it. I love you, and so let me tell you, this has to change. It has to. You have to grow. I have to change. You have to become the person you were meant to be. So come on, let's do this. That's what a prophet does. As I start thinking about Lent, this, this time between now and Easter, this is a time in which we choose to intentionally grow in how we love. This is a time where we intentionally choose to say, I am going to become better at loving. In the same way that that, that uh, teen looked at his mom and said, I want to be a better son. Right? And, and Joel tells us, and the prophet Joel, he says, like, the time is right now to do it. At the time, there is never a good time to, to start this. Like, he says, go interrupt the bride and the groom on their honeymoon. Like, yank them out of their tent that they're traveling. Go pull them back from their honeymoon and say, it is time to get working on this. There's never a good time to do this. So if this feels slightly awkward, well, it is. Right? That's the nature of the prophetic word. It's never convenient. But it is a time to ask. How do each of us need to grow in how we love? How does that word need to develop in our lives? And I'll, I'll propose two options for to sort of help diagnose this. Like, how, well, where do you, where might you approach it? Well, one is to do what that brave teen did. And who might you approach in your life and ask, how can I be a better, right? Are there places in your family that are broken? Are there people in your lives that you're not square with and you really think you need to be? Lent is an excellent time to go to them and say, how can I be a better friend? How can I be a better dad? How can I be a better uncle or son or whatever that relationship is, right? And then take this season, do something about it. We're Methodists, right? Pick a method. Pick a practice, right? We're going to go have lunch weekly or something, right? Put some meat on it and do it. Here's another idea of how you might approach it. I was told by a very wise person once that a good self-check is to read the love passage, right? Uh, 1 Corinthians, love is patient, love is kind, love is not jealous. 
here's, here's how you might uh, approach Lent as well. Take out the word love and put your name in and see at what point you can't keep a straight face. So Andy is patient, Andy is kind, Andy is not jealous, Andy does not brag and is not arrogant, Andy does not seek his own, Andy is not provoked. Like it, you get to that and you go, ooh, aha, ugh. there you go. Welcome to Lent. What can you do about that? Practically. So that your practice of love continues to grow. Whatever you do, as I've said before, and I will say many times again, I am here as your servant. I'm here to help you grow. As the Lord knows, I've got growing to do as well. Whatever you choose to do, I'm here to help you. And I look forward to the fruit of God working in each of our lives, such that as a church, we love people in a way that's more like Jesus Christ. Amen.